In this video, we're going to be looking at how to determine whether a whole molecule is polar or nonpolar, as opposed to just looking at a single bond. As we saw in the previous video, the first thing we need to determine is the electronegativity difference between the two atoms joined by the bond, and with molecules we do this exactly the same way. If you check your periodic table, you'll see that the electronegativity of carbon is less than the electronegativity of oxygen, and we can confirm this with a simple electronegativity difference calculation. 3.4 minus 2.6 is 0 0.8, which we know is less than 1.7, so this isn't an ionic bond, but it's not zero either, which means that the electrons in each bond of the double bond are shared, but shared unequally. Because oxygen has a higher electronegativity, the electrons in both bonds are going to move towards oxygen and away from carbon. We can do this, or we can show this rather, by drawing what we call a dipole vector. For the people that aren't a fan of physics, don't worry, I am not either. Remember that the word vector simply means that we're looking at a direction. So these arrows here show the direction of electron movement. The way that we draw the vector as well also helps you find where the positive side is, because if they show which way the electrons are moving, that tells us where the negative charge is going to be, and therefore the other end of the arrow is where the positive pole is going to be. Where molecules differ than a simple bond, however, is that molecules are, have more than one bond, usually. So in this case, electrons don't just move towards the oxygen on the right, it also happens in the bonds that go to the oxygen on the left. So if we have electrons moving in opposite directions like this, how do we tell whether the overall molecule is polar? Well, that's where we consider the two other factors when it comes to molecular polarity. The second factor we need to consider is something that we call lone pair asymmetry or lone pair symmetry. Asymmetry is the noun form of asymmetrical, which means not the same on either side. So when we take a look at carbon dioxide, we can draw a line of symmetry like this, separating the molecule into left and right halves. We can also draw a line of symmetry like this, separating the molecule into top and bottom. We know that electrons have a negative charge, so we can measure whether one side of the molecule or the other has more negative charge than the other by looking at the distribution of lone pairs. If we look on the right side of the molecule, we see there are one, two lone pairs. Likewise, on the left side, one, two lone pairs. Does either side have more electrons than the other? No. Therefore, does either side have more negative charge than the other due to lone pairs? Again, the answer is no. We can do the same by looking at the top half and the bottom half. On the top half, one, two, and on the bottom half, one, two. So neither the top nor the bottom has any difference in the number of lone pairs, and therefore no difference in terms of negative charge. Now the last thing to consider is what we had talked about earlier, the overall direction of electron movements when we look at the whole molecule, and that is what we call looking at the dipole vectors. So we can see that we have electrons moving from the carbon to the oxygen, but this is happening on both sides. Now there are two ways that you can think of it here. Number one is mathematically. If we take the difference in electronegativity, 0 0.8, between oxygen and carbon, we can say that this represents the amount of movement that electrons have towards oxygen. Now, normally, when we go right, left to right, rather, we designate this as a positive direction here. So, on the right side of this molecule, we would say that the electrons are moving positive 0 0.8 in the positive direction towards the right. Well, if we look at the 
oxygen on the other side, again, the electronegativity difference is the same, but we see the electrons are moving right to left, which is the opposite direction, which we can represent with a negative sign like this. Now, if we add the difference in electronegativity with the direction together, positive 0 0.8 minus 0 0.8 cancels out. In other words, what we are seeing is that electron movement is the same magnitude. We have the same force of electrons moving in both directions, but the directions are opposite. Now, because the directions are opposite, we can say that the electron movement to the right is perfectly cancelled out by the electron movement to the left, and therefore, we don't see electron movement moving in either direction. Therefore, what can we say about this molecule? If we look at this molecule, do we see that either side, the left, the right, the top, or the bottom, has more negative charge than the other? Well, this isn't true with lone pairs, and because the electron movement is cancelled out as well, dipole vectors do not show us anything. So this combination, even though we have a difference in, in electronegativity that lets us think that these are polar covalent bonds, the lone pairs here are symmetrical and the dipole vectors cancel. So because there is no side of this molecule that has more positive charge or more negative charge than the other, this is a nonpolar molecule even though it has a polar covalent bond. Okay, well, what will these patterns look like if we look at a polar molecule? Let's take a look at water here, for example. If you check your periodic table, we can see, yet again, if we calculate the difference in electronegativity, that we end up with a polar covalent bond. 3.4 minus 2.2 is 1.2, which is less than 1.7, so it's not ionic, but it's also greater than zero, which means that it's not a nonpolar covalent bond. If we draw in the vectors to show electron movement, that means that the electrons in each bond are going to be moving towards oxygen, like this. Now, if we look at lone pair symmetry, the common question is, which way do we cut water? Because if we cut water in half like this, well, we have one lone pair on the left and one lone pair on the right, so it looks symmetrical. But if we do this, if we draw a line of symmetry horizontally, we see the top half has two lone pairs and the bottom half doesn't have any because hydrogen doesn't have any lone pairs. So the idea of lone pair asymmetry is if you can find a line of symmetry in which the lone pairs are not the same on both sides, we can say that the lone pairs are asymmetrical. And if the lone pairs are asymmetrical, that means that the top half, uh, half of this molecule has more negative charge than the bottom half does. Now, if we look at the dipole vectors, the direction in which electrons move, we see that this is confirmed. We see that these electrons in the bonds are moving towards oxygen and away from hydrogen, but because of the lone pairs here, these hydrogens are not in the opposite direction as each other as the oxygens in carbon dioxide. So therefore, these dipole vectors do not cancel. And because they do not cancel, we can see that the overall direction of the electron movement is from the bottom half of the molecule, from hydrogen, to the top half of the molecule, the oxygen. Therefore, because these do not cancel, we can say that oxygen is the negative side of the molecule, whereas the hydrogens are the positive side of the molecule. So in a polar molecule, which water definitely is, there will most likely be an asymmetrical distribution of lone pairs, as we see between the top 
and the bottom, and you will almost always, if not always, see that the direction of electron movement, the dipole vectors, do not cancel and show that the electrons move in a single direction. Before we move on to the next video, there are two additional practice problems here. Carbon tetrachloride and this molecule here, difluoromethane. One of these molecules is polar and the other one is nonpolar. See if you can use lone pair asymmetricality, difference in electronegativity, and the direction of the dipole vectors in order to find out which is the polar molecule and which is the nonpolar molecule.